Hi, this is PDF Berserk Arcade at BerserkArcade.com and this is tutorial 143. So where we left off our last tutorial, we had just created the structure for checking to see if we have the version key. And if we didn't have the version key, you know, we're going to actually have to add the version key and basically picking up what level we're going to load up. So let's continue on from there. So let's actually just fire up Unity. I'm going to clear the, the log. And let's just start up and let's just go through the, the workflow. So it starts up and it just says there's no version key. All right, so let's add one. So I'm going to come down here and we're, this is where we're getting the no version key. Uh, we're just going to add one. So uh, player prefs dot set float. And the key for the float we want to set is ver. And the value we want to set is version. And since we know this key does not exist, uh, at this stage, I really don't care if they have a character already made. Uh, it's still really early in the game development cycle. And I'm just going to automatically delete that character they have. So after I'm done, I'm going to want to load that level or the character generation level. So I'm going to want to know uh, what level to load because there is two levels I can load from this script. So I'm going to come up to the top. I'll shrink this back down. And I'm going to create a private string. And I'll just call this level to load. And I'll just set that as being empty for now. And then underneath it, I'm going to create two constants, uh, and they're both be strings, and they're going to be the names of the two levels that we can actually load uh, from this scene. Now, I'll, if you forget what they're called, uh, let's just go back into Unity. You can always come back and open up your build settings, and the two levels I can load is either character generation or level one. So I'm going to go back into Mono Develop, and I'm going to add those these here. So private string. And I'm just going to call this one character generation. And the reason why I'm putting these up here is if I ever decide to uh, change the names of my level, uh, they're both up here at the top. I don't have to keep coming down through the code and looking for all instances of uh, the string and changing them all throughout the script. I just have to change them in one spot. And it was called character generation. And I'll create one more, so private string. And I'll just call this first level. And these are actually supposed to be small characters. And my first level right now is currently called level one with no spaces. Let me just check that character generation. Uh, yep, there's a space there. All right. So I've got those in. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to actually set the level to load to be equal to, oh, what was it? Character generation. So I'll just cut and paste that in. Now it's actually not going to do anything if we run it again. Uh, let's go take a look at it. So if I start it up now, it actually really doesn't do anything except it sets that string. And there we go. So if we were to run it again, I'll make sure to clear the log again and try it. Uh, we'll see we'll see that the key is there. Uh, the same the saved version is the same as the current version because we had just saved it at the end of the last run. Uh, there is a player name because I haven't actually gotten rid of uh, my old character in the app. And the player name has a value. All right. So we're going to want to figure out a way to actually get this to load. And I'm going to be handling that down in my update function. So the first thing I'm going to want to do in my update function is just check to see if I actually have a level to load yet. And if I don't, let's just return out of the update because there's nothing left to do. So we'll say if level to load is equal to and just make it empty we'll just say return so anything after this we won't do now here's where we're actually get, going to get into the actual streaming part I'll come down here 
and we're going to check to see uh, if the level that we're going to load is has has completely streamed down and is ready for us to load. So we can say if now we're going to be using the application class dot get stream progress for level and then the level we want which is level to load and we're going to check to see if it equals one. Uh, now this is actually the application dot get stream progress for level it returns a float and that float is going to be anywhere from zero to one and just think of it as a percentage of how much of that level has loaded so once the level has completely loaded uh, it's going to be a one and if at any point in time it hasn't completely loaded it's going to be less than one so we're just going to check to see if it is one now if it is loaded uh, we'll just debug out and we'll just say level loaded actually say level ready and there's one more check we're going to want to do just to make sure that you know everything is ready for it before we actually try to load it and we're going to say if application dot can streamed level be loaded and of course the, the name of the level which is level to load so here we're checking to make sure that everything's ready for it then we're just going to actually load it. So application, this is actually supposed to be a small i, uh, dot load level. And there's a, we've went on over, I think, a few of the different load levels. Uh, there's load level, load level additive, which adds it on to this, which we really don't need because we don't need this uh, level anymore. Uh, if you have the pro version, you can do load level added, or a sync. And again, we don't need the additive part. Uh, since I've, uh, since most of the people have the, the free version, we're just going to use load level. And the name of the level we want to load. So we're going to say level to load. And that's it. So now it should load our character generation level. If we actually go ahead and open up, well, on the Mac, it's going to be, if you open up Finder, and we've gone over this before. It's in uh, the Unity docs on where to find your player press file. Uh, so it's going to be under your username. Uh, then go under library, uh, preferences, and go down to the bottom. And it's going to be called Unity dot, then whatever your company name is that you have set, and then the name of the application. And just in case you're wondering where this company name and the name of the application comes from, if we were to go to build settings, and player settings here's your company name and here's your product name so whatever you have in there now it is different on the mac because it saves it in the registry and you'll have to consult the docs to find it if you're on windows sorry so we'll go back in and i'm actually going to delete my save file or my plist and there's one more thing I want to do before we actually test it out. And I'm going to come back in here. And right here before we actually set the new version and load up the, the character generation scene, I'm actually going to want to delete all my prefs that are in there now. So that's player, prefs, oops, dot, and delete all. So we'll delete all the keys just to make sure there's no stragglers. And since we're in here, let's actually add one more thing right at the top here, some little toggle that we can use in the inspector. Uh, there's gonna be times while we're testing this out that we're gonna to wanna to delete that player prefs file. And instead of constantly going into either your registry uh, for the Windows or trying to find that uh, plist file on the Mac, uh, let's just come up here, we'll create a Boolean value which is gonna be public. And I'm just going to call this clear prefs. And I'll start it off as equaling faults. And right at the start here, I'm just going to check that value. So if clear prefs, and I'm going to delete all the prefs here. So we'll, we'll show you how that works in a second. So we'll just say player prefs dot delete all. And like I said, it's just uh, save us constantly having to track down that file or look for that spot in the registry and delete it. So 
So it'll come in, and if I select my main camera, which I have my script attached to, I'm going to clear over here, it's now exposed. So if we want to clear or basically delete everything in there to test, we'll just check it. Hit play. And you'll notice it automatically went to the character generation screen, but I have an error. And let's scroll up to the top. Now this is because of the code we added in the last tutorial. So if we click uh, the error, it brings us to our character generator script. And you notice it's erring on the tune.get primary attribute line. And the reason why we're getting that error is if we open up the character player uh, script, you notice that we have an awake function now. And we we'll also probably had a warning up here as well. Uh, I might not be able to scroll that far. Uh, it does show up. It's telling us that, uh, sorry, this is the for the stitch, but basically you're gonna get the same warning for it. I probably already cleared it away. Uh, what we're doing is we're hiding the awake function that came with uh, the player character that we got from our base character. So if we open up base character, uh, we see we have all this stuff here in our awake. And because we're making the awake here from a class that's inherited from it, we're replacing everything that was in here. Now we still want to be able to call all this stuff. And there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, right now, I'm just going to take my player character and we'll just do it one simple line. We'll say base, which means get the base class. And we'll just call the function that we want from the base class. So we're going to call the awake function from our from what we're inherited from, uh, which is actually is a base. Yeah, it's for, right from base character. So it's going to go to base character. It's going to call our awake, which will do all this stuff. Then it comes back and it does the rest of the stuff. So let's save that off. Uh, head back into Unity. Uh, let me see if it. Well, it wouldn't show the warning now, but. Let's select the main camera. We'll make sure it's toggled on to clear the player prefs. We'll start it. And we'll notice that it jumps straight to our character generation scene, which I've obviously haven't got around to texturing up. Now let's do the same thing. We'll select the camera, but this time we're going to get rid of, uh, we're not going to check the clear prefs and we'll start it up. And we should get some different messages. So the key is still there because it saved it from the last time, right after it deleted the old records. And it's saying that the saved, ver the saved version is the same as our current version. And there is no player name. So we still have quite a bit more to go, but we're getting there. Uh, this one's already over 10 minutes, so I'm just going to save this and off. And we'll continue with the next one. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.